All right, this is AP, AB, and BC calculus. We are doing unit one, section 11, which is defining continuity at a point. So let's jump right into this definition. So definition of continuity at a point. F of X is continuous at the point X equals A if the left-sided limit at A equals the right-sided limit at A equals the double-sided limit at A equals F of A. Now there is a caveat to this, so I do want to make a note, right? So, so note, um, if x equals a is an end point, right? So if it's an end point of the domain, then this behaves a little bit differently, okay? So um, if x equals a is an end point, that means that only one of the one-sided limits um, can be evaluated, right? So there is no like let's say there's no left on the graph, right? So let's say we have a graph that looks like this. Let's say I have a graph, a uh, super boring graph that looks like this. Okay, let's say this is my f of x, right? There is no left-sided limit, right? So I can't ask you for the left-sided limit at zero, right? There's no left, uh, there's no left of zero here, and there is nothing right of three. Assume that that dot was supposed to be at three. There's no right of three, right? So you can't go past those values. There's no left of zero, there's no right of three. So if that happens, so then the double-sided limit is automatically equal to the only side there is. So if there isn't another side, so that's the one caveat to this. So let's say that we were looking at this one right here. In this case, right, the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, because there's only a left, right, of f of x is by definition, so that, that's a 1, right, assuming that's what I intended, and that is the same as the double-sided limit, because there is no other side, so the double-sided one is the same as the only limit there is, right, and the same thing would be true on the left. So just to clarify, um, but that's what makes something continuous. Now if we think back to a couple videos back, when we were first doing uh, evaluating limits from graphs, I asked you to look at those points where nothing interesting at all was happening, right? Those points where there was no jump and there was no hole and there was nothing weird. And at those points, you notice that all four of these values were the same. That's because those values were continuous. At these nice, happy, well-adjusted, continuous points, all four of these values are the same. So let's walk through the three kinds of discontinuities that we've seen and talk about why each one of them is an issue for this definition. So why is each discontinuity breaking the rules of continuity? So let's start with the hole. For a whole, the left-sided limit, the right-sided limit, and the double-sided limit are all the same. But f of a is not the same, either because it's undefined, like we see in this picture, or because it is defined, but it's defined somewhere else, like if there's a closed circle somewhere down here. In either of those cases, the issue is that f of a, the actual function value, is not the same as the limit, okay? Why is, uh, why is a jump a discontinuity? Well, that breaks the first two rules right away. We've seen with jumps that the left-sided limit and the right-sided limit aren't the same, right? So in this case, we're looking at a left-sided limit that goes here, a right-sided limit that goes here. Those are not the same number. That's why a jump is discontinuous. Um, and lastly, for a vertical asymptote, sorry, take that back. For a vertical asymptote, uh, f of a is undefined. That instantly breaks the rule. It might also, right, so in some cases, right, so also often the left doesn't equal the right, uh, but we're going to talk more about that in, uh, in section 14, okay? So when we do the section 14 video, we'll spend more time on specifically vertical asymptotes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to walk through some discontinuities and use the definition of continuity to see what's going on. All right, so using the definition of continuity, explain why the function is not continuous at the given point. So in this case, we're looking at this piecewise function at 5 and identify the type of discontinuity. So in order to be continuous at 5, right, if this thing were continuous, we would be saying, so if it's continuous, we'd be saying that the left-sided limit is the same as the right-sided limit, is the same as the double-sided limit, is the same as the actual function. 
So basically, we're going to find each of these and see where the issue is. We know there's an issue because we're told to explain why this is not continuous. So let's start with the left side of the limit. The left side of the limit is going to use the x squared minus 15. The right side of the limit is going to use the e to the x. So if we do x squared minus 15, we get a 10 for the left side of the limit. Right, so the limit as x approaches 5 from the left of f of x is a 10. If we plug in a 5 here, we get e to the fifth. So the limit as x approaches 5 from the right of f of x is an e to the fifth. They're not equal, right? So this thing is not equal to this thing, right? So we have a jump, which is a non-removable. discontinuity. All right, so um, again, I was asked to identify the type, and I did, and I showed using the definition of continuity why this was a discontinuity. All right, P1, try the same thing. Uh, again, you can do it however you want, but it's going to be looking at the left limit, the right limit, and the double-sided limit, and the actual function value, okay? Uh, so pause me if you want to try it on your own. All right, so I'm going to argue that we've seen this function before. Okay, so if I, if I reorder this a little and factor out a negative 2, it seems to me that we've seen, we've seen absolute value of x over x. This is very similar, right? This is the same pattern. I expect that what's probably going to happen is that we have a jump discontinuity, right? We saw that, that the absolute value of x over x, which is sort of one that's worth memorizing, we know that the absolute value of x over x looks like this, right? That's, that's what this one right here looks like. And I'm guessing that this is a similar situation. Maybe not exactly the same situation, but it's similar. An interesting note here is that the easiest way to see what's happening is to just pick some really easy values on either side of 2. Now, why do I say 2? Well, absolute values change their functionality at the spot where the inside is 0, right? So, so this thing's going to switch its action, right? It's going to switch the thing that it does when this inside is zero, meaning it's going to switch at two. So basically, I could pick a couple easy values on each side of two, and I could just plug in and see what's happening, right? So if I were to plug in a zero, I would get the absolute value of negative two, which is a two, on top of a four, which is a one-half. Right? I would plug in a 1, and I'm going to get the absolute value of negative 1, which is a 1, on top of a 2, which is also a 1 half. So it seems to me that the left-sided limit is a 1 half. If I plug in 3, I'm going to get an absolute value of 1 on top of a negative 2. If I plug in 4, I'm going to get an absolute value of 2 on top of a negative 4 which is still a negative one half. So it seems to me that my right-sided limit is a negative one half. So since the limit as x approaches two from the left of the function is a one half, and the limit as x approaches two from the right of the function uh, is negative one half, and one half isn't the same as negative one half, I seem to have a jump or a non-removable discontinuity. All right, and again, I use the limit definition uh, of continuity to explain that. All right, let's go ahead to an E2. Use the definition of continuity to explain why the function is not continuous at the given point. Identify the type of discontinuity. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can simplify this, right? So basically, we need to find the left and right limit of this thing. But what I want you to notice is that if I factor this, like if I tried to plug in and find the double-sided limit first, let's just say that I tried to find the double-sided limit first, right? If I want the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, I'm going to get 0 because on the top I'm going to get 2 minus, uh, sorry, plus 1 minus 3, and on the bottom I'm going to get 1 minus 1. I get a 0 over 0. That's a hint that I can simplify. Right? That's a big flashing red neon sign that I need to do some algebra. So I recognize that I could clean up my f of x by factoring, and I recognize that the x minus 1 is probably the problem since my x is approaching 1. 
So when I factor the numerator, it seems to me that I recognize the front seats have to be a 2x and an x, and I'm pretty sure this thing has to be a minus 1, which means I get a plus 3 here, and I can FOIL and check that I get 2x minus a 2x plus a 3x, which is definitely my plus x minus 3. This cancels, which means that what I've got here is a whole at x equals 1, right? Um, and so essentially, that's enough. Like if I wanted to find the limit as x approaches uh, 1 from the left, I could use this 2x plus 3, right? And when I do that, I'm going to get a 5. And if I want to find the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, it's still that 2x plus 3, which is a 5. But f of 1 is undefined, and that's the issue, right? So f of 1 is undefined, which is what tells me that I have a whole or a removable discontinuity. All right, let's try P2, same idea. So if you tried to find this, uh, and again, you could even figure it out by trying to find the actual function value, right? If you try to plug this 3 in, right, if you plug in f of negative 3, you're going to get a 0 over 0, which is never the answer. So right away, f of negative 3 is undefined. I did not give myself enough room for this. Undefined. All right. So right away, I know that it's going to be discon uh, discontinuous because of that. What I don't know, is there also a jump or is this a whole? So I would suggest that you simplify. If I factor out a 5x, what I'm left with is this x plus 3. So sure enough, this is a whole because it cancels. So there is a whole at x equals negative 3. It is a removable discontinuity, right? Um, and again, you can show that by finding the left-sided limit, right? If you wanted the limit uh, as you approach negative 3 from the left, it's just going to be that 5x with a negative 3 in it, so negative 15. And the limit from the right is also going to be a negative 15, which means the double-sided limit is also that negative 15. But the actual function value at negative 3 is undefined. All right, and that's it for, uh, for showing how continuities work. We are going to spend some time with vertical asymptotes, which is the other kind of continuity uh, in section 14.